everyone, Pot ASM. Welcome to part one of our Tamiya Aston Martin DBS build. So today we're going to be dealing with body prep. So we're going to get all the body panels uh, attached to the body that need gluing on. We're going to sand them all. We're going to prep them all for primer. We're going to hit it with primer and then prep the primer body ready for part two, which will cover painting the body, uh, put a wash on it as well, um, a Tamiya panel line wash to accentuate all the doors panel lines, shut lids, etc, etc, and then come back and we'll hit it with the Pro Range 2K and hopefully get this thing nice and shiny. So there we go. Now, as I get asked all the time about what products I used, um, there's a link in the description now that takes you to a big list over on the ISM forum. There's around about 90 products listed on there and links to where they're from as well. So if anything you see in the videos, if you think, oh, what's that? Um, and I mentioned what it is, go have a look in the list and there will more than likely be a link to the product and where you can possibly buy it from. Now if you click on a link and it's not available in your country or it's out of stock, Google for that name and you'll find it at another source. I've just found whatever's easiest for me to find. But literally, you name it, it's in there. Uh, if there's anything missing from the list, let me know and I'll add it. But hopefully I've got all bases covered there. Everything I used this video and all the videos should be covered in that list i hope you find that useful as always got any feedback or comments let me know um and uh, i hope you enjoy the build so let's get cracking with this and let's get started okay so the instructions so we won't be following these to the letter um firstly let's have a quick look at all the uh, paint call ads that tamia calls out for in here we'll be taking those with a pinch of salt and more than likely just using our own now i don't follow the normal steps the way this goes start with the brakes and the running gear or the engine uh, we're going to jump right in with the bodywork. So we're skipping through to everything we need. So we've got the body shell, front bumper, there's also the wing mirrors, uh, the rear insert just below the rear spoiler, and two inserts in the light. So I normally grab a mark pen. This is the editing pen I use to run around my lights to make them look like rubber surrounds. And we make a note in the instructions of any parts that are the same body colour. So when this is calling out for TS40, which is the black the kit's calling out, circle them in black, and then we know all the parts that need to be primed, sprayed in the base colour, and 2K cleared later on down the line. This gets all the prep together and makes sure we're all in the same boat. Now the bumper does cause some bits to be added later on. Uh, there's also the bonnet as well. Uh, the bumper does cause some mesh to be added later on, but we're not going to do that until we're all painted up and ready to go near the end. So several components to do. There are seam lines across the body, as you can see, one over the front wing into the A-pillar, one from the back of the C-pillar along the back of the uh, top of the arch kind of thing, and then it runs along the back of the boot spoiler, and along the back of the bumper too. So make a note to where these are. Some people like to mark them with a marker. I'm not too keen. I like to keep the surface free of marker pens. Uh, in case we get any contaminants later on down the line. And there's two just in front of the headlights on the front. So these are going to need sanding off. Um, quite tricky ones on this, as we'll see later on. Um, the bonnet's completely free of seam lines. It just needs removing from that uh, sprue point at the top, which is quite a meaty one. And the bonnet, uh, sorry, the bumper as well. On the sprue, again, all it needs is the sprue points cutting off, cleaning up, and we're good to go. Um, for attaching it to the body. Now you can attach the bumper directly to the body before we spray. No problem in doing that at all. Just make reference in your instructions to make sure that later on down the line it's not going to be fouled or in the way because some of these Tamiya kits require the bumper to be added after the body is attached to the chassis. So just have a look through and make sure you're not going to interfere with anything you need to do later on. So we cut all the parts free from the sprues. We're not cutting right up to them. We're going to trim them off, leaving a bit of sprue attached. And then we'll trim closer with the Tamiya cutters and then come in with some UMP sanders and get them right up where they need to be. So as you can see, there's several components. Now these are all going to need mounting for priming, spraying and 2K. Uh, and we'll deal with that in a little bit. So as I said, we cut them off the sprue. We're not going right up to the uh, edge of the part. Now we're going to go very close to the edge, leaving just the smallest bit of plastic behind. Um, that way we can sand them clean, there's no indentations, we're not at risk of cutting them with the cutters, and it leaves a nice, clean piece of plastic to deal with. 
These are by far uh, my favourite cutters. I love Tamiya tools. Um, as you can see, they cut through the plastic with absolute ease. Be careful with this one. I found it easy to cut from the top. It put no strain on the plastic then. And we're going in close, leaving about half a mil of plastic free. These Tamiya cutters, I've had them for ages. They're absolutely superb. There's links in the description down below where you can get them from. And um, they just don't miss a beat. They're absolutely fantastic. And they cut absolutely square as hell. So we've got a UMP240 uh, Thinny Sponge. As you can see, it's a used one. Try not to use a brand new sander if you can because they are a bit... Um, they work a little bit better worn on car bodies, in my opinion. Um, so always keep on to hand that's worn and it's not quite as rough or abrasive then. Uh, and what we need to do is systematically work around the car and all those seams lines I pointed out before, removing them. You can feel them, they are pronounced. You run a fingernail over them, you can feel them sticking up. So it's a case of lightly sanding. There's no real pressure being applied. As you see, I'm checking it with my nail. But just letting the sander do its work and lightly run over. What we don't want to do is change the profile of that body in any way because it will be noticeable. Uh, there's also a bit of a seam of the windscreen there as well, which we'll hit a little bit later on, just up there. So bear that in mind too. You will see them. Basically, the seam goes from the front to the back of the vehicle and it's usually hidden in panel lines or across the window. So just have a look, um, because if you don't spot them now, as soon as you prime, you certainly will. Uh, like I say, letting the sander do the work, lightly running across the top, until we're happy that it's uh, all gone. Keep checking with your nail. Once you think it's gone, you can come with a buffer, tidy it all up, and then move on to the next one. But like I say, don't apply loads of pressure. Let the sander do the work. Make sure you hold the sander correctly. Don't put excess pressure on the end. Or using the very edge of the sander because it will rip um, they're not made to be sanded right with the very tip especially these sponge ones and as you can see it's making short work of that seam with no pressure whatsoever that'll be gone in no time so there we go keep checking it once you think you've got rid of it go a little bit more I've always found once you got rid of the seam hit a little bit more than you think and then come back and we hit it with the green side of the UMP buffer. And this will give it a very, very fine sand at the end. And then we can hit it with the white side of the buffer. And that will polish it up to a high sheen plastic. And again, just check as you go around. Make sure there's none pronounced sticking up everywhere. Um, the final finish here doesn't really matter. We're just trying to get rid of any scratches from the uh, thinny sponge. Because we're going to scuff it all up later on with some 6000 micro mesh anyway. It's just a case of, it is monotonous, and it can be boring, but it's a step well worth taking. Unfortunately, as you see later on, we are going to get a ghost seam reappear. It's a real shame. It's just one of those things with using hot lacquer paints. They can appear. As you see, that's the seam gone. Although you can see it in the plastic, it has totally gone. I've made sure it can't be felt, and I've gone one step further and sanded it even more. Once all the body panels have been taken care of, all the seams, I then come in with some 6,000 grit micro mesh. Again, the link is in the description. Uh, and we're using it wet, and we're going all over the body and scuffing every single panel up. Um, this helps the primer adhere, gives us something to grip to, and it makes sure that you know any contaminants or marks on the body have been removed. It looks awful right now, as you can see. But as soon as you wipe it off, give it a clean up, it'll look absolutely spotless again. And again, prep is the key. Preparation is what gives you a good body finish. It's well worth taking that extra time. Um, although it might seem monotonous and a bit boring, 10, 15 minutes here can make a massive difference in the finish you get with the end product. So please, yeah, take your time. Micromesh is a fantastic product. Um, it's slightly cushioned, so it's quite forgiving as well. And this 6000 grit is perfect for scuffing up your car bodies. Like I say, very, no pressure at all. Make sure it stays wet. That cuts down any scratches caused by the abrasive. And once you're happy with it, put it down, grab a bit of tissue paper, and just give it a, a dry off all the way around. And you get it back to neater plastic. You'll see now, watch. As we wipe it off, it looks a lot cleaner than it does with all the dirty, dusty water all over it. Once you've happily removed all the dust off the surface, we come in with a soft toothbrush. I've got on my little boy's very old toothbrush. I've had this for years. Uh, tip I got from Norman, and it's a very, very uh, useful tip. Norman Dennison, who joins us on the live shows, 
Very handy tip for getting out sanding dust and residue in amongst all your seam lines. A nice soft bristled toothbrush. Again, prep is the key. You can blow this out with the airbrush, but I find doing it now. Um, have a good look around. Make sure the panel lines are all nice and free of any dust. And it is surprising just how much collects in there. So again, another couple of minutes preparation is well worth spent. So, we're onto the bonnet now. We've got where the sprue point was. We've got a 400 thinny stick from UMP. From myself and late Ultimate Roller Products. One of my favourite sanders this. Absolutely superb. It's probably my most used thinny stick. And again, what we don't want to do is alter the profile of the back of the bonnet. So, we're constantly stopping, checking, making sure we're not removing anything but the excess sprue plastic. You may have to come in on a slightly different angle, as I've done there. And again, as you can see, no pressure on the sander at all. Just let the sander do the work. We're just lightly rubbing it over. Once we're done, we can move on to the side of the bumper. And again, light movement. We don't want to put a lot on it because it will alter the move, uh, contour of the bumper. Coming in with the thinny sponge again. Just double checking with our fingertips to make sure it's all gone. Uh, and once we're happy, hit it with the buffer again. Raise the side first. And then flip it over to the white. And buffer up to a high shine. Again, this will be flatted again with the 6000 Micromesh. So we've got a couple of parts to glue in place. We've got this rear um, insert that's behind um, under the rear spoiler. And we popped it in place, checked it fitted perfectly. I'm just going to hit it with some Tamiya Extra Thin. Not a lot at all. I'm not even going to let the capillary work. I've just loaded the brush up ever so slightly. And we're just going to drag it across the top until it's glued perfectly in place. Less is more. We don't want to get any on the bodywork because what you get excess on, you have to clean back up later. Front bumper. Now, because the front bumper is a separate part, it's been slide molded. Um, there's no seam lines on it whatsoever. It's a very clean piece. So this just needs gluing in place. So I like to test fit it first. Have a look for the key gluing points, which for us are the locator tabs either side. Make sure your finger is well away from anywhere you are gluing, even if it's on the other side, because trust me, it will capillary action straight through onto your finger and leave a big fingerprint on the bodywork. How do I know? I've been there many, many times. My fingerprints are on many of my cars. <laughs> from a long time ago, I learned this lesson a while back, and we just take our time now. So again, don't load the brush up. We're just letting the uh, brush drag it through. And gluing the bumpers on each side until they're in perfectly. Now, mounting the parts. As you can see, I've got an old Ultima Primer bottle. I've got some white tack on top. This bottle's half full of water, so it's weighted at the bottom. And we've got some white tack on, and we're going to very lightly be careful pushing parts down with any force because you can damage them. We're just going to lightly push it down until it's held in place. And obviously, because the part is weighted at the bottom, it shouldn't fall over. So again, there we go. This has been um, scuffed up. And we're just getting any dust off there. We'll put that down. The body is ready. It just needs a bit more dust removing. And what we're going to do now, we're going to mount it to the Tamiya spray stand. And then we're going to give it a wipe over with some UMP airbrush cleaner. Uh, the airbrush cleaner is great on plastic. doesn't harm it at all. And it will remove fingerprints, any contaminants that are there. And again, this key bit of preparation pays dividends in the end you won't get any reactions with your primer everything will stick fine it'll spray perfect um, a lot of problems people have with primer is probably down to surface contaminants fingerprints are the worst culprit of them all it really is I don't think people realize just how bad a fingerprint can be there's one on the roof if you look right now there it is there's a thumbprint right on that roof if I left that I guarantee when I spray the primer it would react over that part. Nearly any primer will. So we've got a few more parts to mount. We've got a Loctite uh, Precision Pen. So it's linked in the description again. Liking this little pen, but using it more and more lately. It's a slightly thicker glue. And it's ideal for things that need a little bit of grab or bite to begin with. So photo etch. Or as we're going to do now, we're going to cut the ends off these cocktail sticks. Going to put a dab of CA glue. We're going to flatten the ends by tapping them on the bench. There we go. A little dab of CA glue and then in a part that won't be seen behind the mirror glass we're going to just push it in and let the CA glue hold it should instantly grab it there we go 
and pop it to one side to dry. Really simple, really easy. Now we've got these two little inserts that go in the lights. These are going to have to be put in after the lights go in, so these are not going to go on the body now. Again, we touch this air glue to a flat part of a cocktail stick, and we just touch it to the back of the part, the part that won't be seen, and there we go. Perfect. As long as you don't touch that, that will not fall off. And again, it's just get your cutters, tap it on the bench to flatten the edge, a little dab, maybe too much, push it on the part, and there you go. As easy as that. So, where we glued these parts on, we're coming in with a UMP buffer. We're going to remove any glue marks that are left behind because, by the nature of glue, it will leave a mark where it's glued. So, nothing really abrasive here. We've got the very fine blue side of the buffer first and then we're going to come in with the white and just buff it all to a high shine so we've got some ultimate airbrush cleaner on some kitchen roll as you can see not a lot and then we'll make sure everything's out of the way and then we're going to wipe it over the body and we're just going to systematically go all around the vehicle all around the body shell and make sure any areas that are going to be painted have been hit with this. Now, most of it will evaporate away as you're going round, but we'll come back at the end and dry it off. And this should cut down on any problems you have with your primer, any issues at all. Just make sure if you move it again, make sure you wipe it back where you've just wiped it. Once you've wiped it over, make sure you get all the nooks and crannies, come back with another piece of paper and dry it off fully. Like I say, a lot of it will evaporate, but just to make sure we get rid of it. This is the colour we're going for. It's Vertigo Blue, Aston Martin from Zero Paints. This is the colour we showed earlier on Facebook, if you saw it. I've test sprayed some spoons. Now, I did spray a silver spoon, and I did spray a white spoon, and I thought the silver spoon would have the deeper colour, and I was very surprised to see that the white spoon was actually the deeper colour. So it was just UMP white primer, and then sprayed over four light coats of the blue. And it gave a very nice deep blue shine. All the parts are mounted. As you can see, we're ready for a primer now. We've got our ultimate apex, a 30 PSI. Uh, the primer is unwarmed. I've not warmed the primer for quite some time. And I've not found any difference in using it with or not primed. It sprays perfectly for me. A lot of people say they struggle in spraying white primer and ultimate primer in white. And um, it's easy. It really is easy. So this bottle, we're going to load up the airbrush. So, like, like I say, it's Ultimate Apex, we're at 30 PSI. Pressure is the key with our primer. A couple of test sprays into the filter. We're going to spray over the body with air, just to remove any dust. And we're going to come in and put a very, very light coat of primer down to begin with. You see just how light it is. We're not hosing it on. If you hose it on, it will run. It will spit. It will not look good. So that's it. We're just going to put a light coat on. We'll move around to the other side. Let it dry. And then come back. And then put several more coats on. Probably get three coats in total. As you can see, the Tamiya spray stands are really handy. Every product I'm showing you and use here is linked in the description. Click on it. It'll take you to a big list of products. They're all there. Just search through the list. If you get stuck at all, just ask me. But as you can see, spraying it not too thick. We're not trying to cover it in one go. As you can see, that's going on no problem at all. Make sure you pay attention to all the different angles, recesses, uh, so on and so forth, to make sure you get your even coverage all the way around. As you can see, no issues getting that on there at all. Going down perfect. Make sure you get inside those uh, bonnet shuts as well, because they will be painted. As you can see, we're just giving the inside of the bonnet a prime as well. It'll be painted a different colour later. But we may as well get a first layer of primer down. Now, onto the roof. As you can see, you see the kind of coats I'm putting down. They're not too thick. Get nice even coverage all the way around. We've got no problems at all there getting that down. Perfect. So, it's a nice warm day. I'm used to spraying this stuff, so I can start coming back a little bit heavier. If you're not used to it, I would have left that for probably a good 10 minutes, let it dry, and then come back and put your second coat on. But I'm so used to spraying this, 
I know how far I can push it and I know I can come back and start putting it on a little bit heavier in places should I need it and speed up the process a touch as well it's a very good primer once you've learned how to spray it and it does take a little bit of you know technique to get it to, to spray correctly as all paints do uh, it's a very versatile and very very reliable primer I absolutely love it um, before we marketed it ultimate I was using the Badger Steiner as bottling and it always worked brilliant and uh, knocks all the other primers out of the water as far as I'm concerned so this is our bonnet we mounted on the bottle lid earlier again we're just give it a light dust off then we're going to give this a quick light prime as well you've got a few angles to take care of on this you've got the side of the bonnet um, underneath not as much on this we can sort that later but the side and edges need doing otherwise you would see that as you look down the side of the hood or bonnet and there's also a couple of vents as well so you need to make sure you get the angles right so this is after several coats of primer now as you can see we've got some fantastic coverage there it's really starting to look the part so I reckon one more coat of primer and we will be done so I'm just drying off with air any air is just a little bit wet like I say, if you're not too sure, do a light coat, leave it 10 minutes, another light coat, leave it 10 minutes. You will get used to spraying it and ensuring you get all the areas covered. I'm just making sure now we get under all the bonnet, uh, under the bumper, into all the grills at the front, making sure all the sills are covered, into the rear, the rear light covers, making sure all those areas have got primer where we need them. And I've also primed inside the body around the windows as well. Not necessarily something you will see all the time, but if it's a body panel, and you can see it at any point, um, painted the body colour it's going to be. may not be seen, it may be black, may have some trim inside it, what have you. Um, but for the most part, I make sure all the interior window pillars and surrounds and everything are all primed, ready to go. Okay, on the smaller parts, these have had a few dustings of primer. Make sure you put a lot less than you think on the smaller parts. It's so easy to overspray smaller bits um, take it a lot easier on them you'll be surprised how easy it is to overspray so again systematically take your time as you're doing one pass of the body and the bonnet put it down do a pass of the other bits and bobs as well the um, wing mirrors and the inserts for the lights and just make sure they're all got even coats all the way around you don't want any mismatched colors and this is the same when laying down the body color as well take your time and it will all pay off in the end quick check of the body and there we go fully primed happy how that looks as you can see there she is all done beautiful white color feels pretty smooth it's not too bad at all but what we've got here now is got some 12,000 micro mesh and we're going to give this a light sand all over and this will remove any high spot any flecks of dust or spits out the airbrush and again not really applying any pressure and it's quite a fine sandpaper as well be wary of the edges or any curves and what have you because the paint's always thinner there. Just take your time and go around and give it a light sand all over. And this will prep us for uh, coming back in part two and getting down the body colour, uh, a wash in the body lines and the 2K clear coat as well. So again, preparation is key. Make sure you give it a good sand all over. Wipe off some excess water. I do the sides each side the front the back and the roof and wipe them off as i'm going so there's no dirty water flowing everywhere and then just have a visual inspection for any other high spots you might have missed and if you have come back in and give them another quick sand it's as simple as that so again more preparation i know it seems like it takes forever but trust me it's well worth taking that extra time just to make sure it's all fully flatted and sanded because it will show through so there we go all sanded just drying off the last remnants body's now nice and smooth and ready for our next step which will be paint so there we go as you can see primed looking absolutely wonderful UMP white primer laid down an absolute treat no problem at all 30 psi straight through the UMP apex no bother at all we've flattened it ready for paint next time really looking forward to getting that vertigo blue down it's going to look fantastic and i cannot wait to see a 2k cleared i'm hoping Fingers crossed it's going to look stunning, but we'll see that in part two. Um, part two should be up in a couple of days. We are Tuesday today, so I will probably put it up on Thursday, um, and we'll get cracking on that one as well. So if you like the video, as I say, any products I've used are linked in the description down below. 
click on it, it takes you a massive link of all the stuff I use, everything from tissue paper to the 2K to the chair I sit on to the camera I'm using right now to film this. Uh, if you've got any comments, questions, whatever, pop them in the comments. I read everything. And uh, as always, check out the forum and Facebook page. It's Nassau Scar Modeler, umpretail.com, Live at the Bench, the Off Air Hangout Group, my Paul ISM Facebook group as well. Thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. Take care.